If you are here, you may have fibromyalgia or know someone who does. My goal is to shed light on this complex illness. I'm not a medical doctor, I'm a psychologist. So I look at fibromyalgia through that lens. This is your place, Fibro and you. Previously shown that fibromyalgia patients tend to have high counts of white blood cells and cytokines, which are immune cells. Immune cells are often found when a patient is suffering from an infection. So previous studies have believed that fibro is affected by an individual's immune system. To this point, studies have shown that the brain's immune system is weakened. When blood flow is reduced in the brain, pain and stress levels are increased, and in turn, the immune system struggles to fight off bacteria. In fibro, a lack of sleep, fatigue, and a loss of appetite can weaken the immune system and make it difficult to stay healthy. A hormone called cortisol is often decreased in fibro and weakens the body. Estrogen and progestin hormones are irregular, which also weakens the body. It is strongly believed that fibro is a condition that weakens the immune system by causing abnormalities and irregularities in the body. Well, in July of 2021, a new study from the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology, and Neuroscience at King's College London resulted in fibromyalgia being a, a potential disease of the immune system. My first video that I did on what we know about fibromyalgia, according to researchers, I stated that researchers believe the brain is involved and affected. I provided a link to the article that I read in the description below and to this new study. This study posits that antibodies in patients result in our increased pain sensitivity, reduced movement, muscle weakness, and the reduction of small nerve fibers in the skin, which are all typical of fibro. I stated in that video, what we know about fibromyalgia, that I felt fibro was a disease. How fibro is viewed by clinicians and people in general will be profound if this new study is correct. It will have to be repeated and confirmed, but I believe this could lead to real treatment options. Here's what they did. Mice were injected with antibodies, of people with fibromyalgia and the mice quickly developed an increase in sensitivity to pressure and cold and reduced movement grip strength. Movement grip strength, say that three times. My first appointment with my rheumatologist involved her asking me to squeeze her hand as tight as I could. I was shocked, gosh, I'd hurt her, wouldn't I? But she insisted. So I did. To my surprise, she didn't even flinch. I guess I wasn't as strong as I thought I was. But back to this study. Other mice were injected with healthy antibodies from non-fibro participants, and the mice weren't affected, positing that antibodies were the cause, or at least a contributing factor. The good news is that there are current therapies out there that treat autoantibodies. Um, autoantibodies are antibodies that are found in autoimmune conditions. But for further clarification, once the autoantibodies were removed from the infected mice, the mice went back to their normal condition. I have a question for you. Have you ever had an ANA test by a physician? It's an anti-nuclear antibody test. If so, what was your result? Please tell us in the comment section below. Usually I would get a positive result most of the time and occasionally a negative test. I don't know the reason for this, 
but it was always confusing even to my rheumatologist who was always testing me for known auto autoimmunity diseases like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. I stopped going to her because the blood work got expensive. I had to drive to another city to see her and I got tired of getting my blood drawn only to discover that they found nothing. But on to the study. Fibro is considered the most common pain condition with at least 2% of the population having it and about 80% are women. It's been previously posited that men are probably equally affected but don't seek treatment. So those numbers are lower for men, even though they may be equally affected. But for individuals who have an autoimmune rheumatological condition, about 10 to 30% also have fibro. It's been known that in immune processes are dysregulated in patients, but these altered patterns of inflammatory and immunoregulatory uh, cytokines don't follow a pattern of consistency, which has made it difficult to, de to determine what the actual dysregulated processes are. I want to quote from this study concerning some of the things I mentioned in my first video. Quote, and one note that FMS FMS is what researchers use for fibromyalgia. So quote, the importance of altered central nervous system function and plasticity, plasticity in FMS is illustrated by altered brain activity patterns, glia activation in the brain, impaired condition pain modulation, and multisensory hypersensitivity to a wider range of stimuli. However, it is becoming increasingly clear that peripheral alterations also contribute to the underlying pathology. As exemplified by identification of small fiber pathology of FMS patients and altered cytokine levels. Okay, that's a lot, I know. But it means that researchers are getting to answers, and that's a good thing. Do you remember me mentioning the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system as the two systems of the overall nervous system? And I stated that they're both affected. Researchers are still stating that information. Altered brain patterns and small fiber pathology are also important. But for me, the most important part is the information about cytokines. Cytokines are small proteins that control how other immune system cells and blood cells grow. They help the body's immune system and inflammatory response these proteins are very important, for example, for cancer treatment, by helping abnormal cells die and normal cells live longer. Chemokines have also been found in the blood of individuals with fibro. Chemokines are a specific type of cytokine that make an immune cell move toward a, a target. So, you can hear why these proteins are so important in our bodies. Some, kind, some cytokines are made in a lab to treat cancer. So I wonder how they will come into play with fibro. So the next step is for them to determine the factors the symptom-inducing antibodies bind to. Well, blood-based tests could be completed for diagnosis and treatment strategies could be developed. These researchers also stated, quote, our results suggest that therapies which reduce the total IgG teeter, such as plasmapheresis or immunoadsorption, or which specifically reduce autoreactive IgG, 
may be effective for FMS. Alternatively, symptomatic therapies that interfere with the binding of autoreactive antibodies or prevent their functional consequences may also provide effective treatment approaches. Now, I know we've kind of heard some of this in the past. Um, over the years, there's something potential, but this one really gets me um, excited about the potential of a cure in the future, or at least treatment. Now, I'm not a neuroscientist, so I don't really know what all that means. But for me, it means that there are already treatments out there and they could potentially tailor them to fibromyalgia. And that's good news. Thank you for listening. I send gentle hugs your way. Please like, share, and subscribe. And blessings to you. Love you. Potent clarifate. Research researchers are still peripheral 